Hello, so today we are going to talk about the four levels of testing. Now, let's start from the beginning. First of all, you need to know that these levels do not only apply to a system, but they can also apply to a system of systems. Mainly, let's say if you have a product that consists of multiple information systems, then these four test levels apply to the overall product, or in some cases to the overall project. Let's start from the beginning now. The foundation is made out of component, which is also called unit testing. During this component testing phase, the focus is on the actual building blocks of each system, mainly functions, procedures. These are currently tested in component testing. Most of the time, this is done by the development team. The next layer is integration test. During integration test, the focus is on the interaction between the components. At later stages, this integration test can even focus at the interaction between systems. So, moving back, after we finish the component test, we need to make sure that the components integrate with each other. This we test in integration test. And after this stage is complete, we move to the system test. This is our third layer and one of the most important ones because this is the time where we finally focus on the end-to-end -end behavior of the system. We look at it as a whole. We look at it from all perspectives, functional and non-functional, and we see how all the pieces fit together. In some cases, when we do not only look at a system, but where we look as, at a combination of systems, mainly we can have the system test covering the end-to-end -end process throughout this set of information systems. Finally, the fourth layer, which is also the top of our four-layer pyramid, is acceptance test. Some of you know it as user acceptance testing, and this is the stage where, besides having the whole product in front of us and looking at it, we need to make sure that we gain the proper confidence that our testing reaches its completion and our product or system, or even system of systems, is fit for purpose and fit for use. Now, in order to give you a better idea about what I'm talking about, let's, uh, let's go to, to an example. I'm thinking now about a project where I was involved in around four or five years ago, where we had to develop, or, or let's say not develop, where we had to technically upgrade the integration layer between 15 countries and different information systems. Our core focus was on the middleware. We planned it in five waves, and for each wave, we were looking at each of the test levels, component, integration, system, and acceptance. For component, our development team was doing the code and then testing it to make sure that the new version of the product, after it suffered the technical upgrade, is working in the same manner as the existing one, but through the new technology. The layer on top, that integration test, we were making sure that the connectivity with the source and the destination was proper, that data can flow through back and forth from one system to another through this layer, and to make sure that each piece of the system communicates properly. Up on level, during the system test, this is where our technical teams with our functional consultants started working and making sure that the processes that flow through that uh, architecture are working from an end-to-end -end perspective, both functionally and non-functionally. So we had our performance, our stress, and other activities also overlapping our functional testing. And at the end, the final stage, that acceptance testing, has been done by the business teams that came to verify and certify that their day-to-day -day activity 
will not be impacted and will work in order to confirm that what we deliver is fit for use and fit for purpose prior to giving the sign off in order to close the deal. This is what we've done. This is an example of how everything integrates. And for our next video, we will talk about test planning and then move into test analysis, test design, test implementation, and finally test execution.